Hey YouTube, so I'm back with my final review on the Sahara case. This is a case, a uh, folio case for the iPad 12.9 inch 5th uh, gen Pro. So, um, after, I think it's been about a week of use, I do have some opinions. Um, so let's start with the first thing that I notice like every time I use the case. We'll kind of come down here. Again, very nice material. That was my first impression. It's like a leather, uh, pay, a polyurethane leather. So that is very nice. However, okay, so that's my comp first complaint right there is like when I open the case, the magnet doesn't really hold the keyboard in place very well. So it'll do what it just did is kind of like flop off. Um, just doesn't hold it very well. So you definitely wouldn't want to shut it this way because the keyboard will fall right off. You always wanna shut it from the iPad side, which is fine. But that kind of brings me to my next point, which is the sleep-wake functionality. So when you close it, it's supposed to sleep, and then when you open it, it's supposed to wake. Um, I've tried that with the keyboard attached and with the keyboard not attached, and it's very hit and miss. So as you can see, the screen is on. We'll go ahead and shut it and it looks like it went to sleep that time. Let me check on my end. I think it did. Okay, so let's open it up and it woke. And as you can see there, the screen is still on. I think it went to sleep again. No, it was still on. Okay, I know it's really hard to see that light shining through there, but unless you um, kind of press down in the right manner, the iPad actually doesn't sleep. So that was just one of the complaints that I had about the case. Um, now, before I get into everything else, overall, my opinion of this case is still, at the price point, if you have $109, then you get a trackpad, a keyboard, and a pretty nice case that has multi-angle stand. So um, before we get into any other negative um, aspects of the case, I did just wanna say that. So my next finding, I guess you could say, is that the case around um, the bezel here is very gummy. So I'm not really using any, um, you know, sort of strength at all. And as you can see, the case will just kind of come up in areas. So if you're like opening the case this way, it'll kind of come up. And the concern there is, of course, that dust or debris could get underneath the case and over time scratch your bezel or the back uh, of your iPad. Um, so that was just a finding that I had. Also, in the description of the case, I believe it said the interior was made of like a what is it called, microfiber. And uh, it, is, it isn't, it's made of more of like a texturized rubber, which is fine because as you can see, you have these three viewing angles. But I have found that even if you want to use something outside of those viewing angles, you can sometimes accomplish it because the rubber will catch the rubber of the case. Um, this is especially true if you wanted to use the iPad um, on your lap or in bed or something like that and you didn't want to use one of the preset cutouts. Um, I don't think a microfiber lining would have done that. So, you know, it was in the description. I'm pretty sure that it was microfiber lined, but um, no big deal that it's not for me. Uh, what I did want to say that was a positive is that the volume covers, and I'll try to get in there right here, those were very responsive, uh, very good cutout there. And again, when I unboxed in my original video, I showed you guys the speakers. And for the most part, the cutouts are okay. But what I didn't notice when I did the unboxing was that part of the speaker here and here uh, is covered by the case. And so I did think that was something worth mentioning. Of course, you have a good cutout here and then your sleep-wake button. Very responsive. I do like the button covers a lot. Um, On to the keyboard. The keyboard is nice. Uh, I will say, so it is backlit. In the unboxing video, I kind of wanted to know if this could change colors, and it can. Let's see if I can remember how to do it. Um, I think it's function and then the light bulb, and that will take you through your array of colors, which I think is a really nice touch, especially, again, at the price point that it's offered at.
So that, that's very nice. Uh, the keyboard, I would say, is a little cramped. And so, for example, here is my iPhone. Um, it's about the size of maybe, now this is a Pro, it's not a Pro Max, but a little bit less than two iPhones side by side. So it is a little bit cramped. Actually, I can show you in comparison. Now, you wouldn't have this in a case for an iPad, obviously, but this is my Apple keyboard. And if you take the numeric side off of it and you wanted to compare the two, it's just a little bit smaller than my Apple keyboard, but that kind of, for me, made all the difference because it feels a little bit cramped. Now, you can certainly get used to the spacing of the keys, um, but it does take some getting used to. Also, the keys, uh, this is a very personal thing, so I don't know what your preference is. The keys are very raised, and so it takes a little bit more of a push instead of like a low profile key that has, you know, like a reassuring click, but it's a lower profile. These are definitely raised up a little bit more, so I did notice that. I love that the function keys are included up top, so there's a lot that you can do. You can take screenshots and what have you. There's really a lot packed into such a little and very lightweight, I mean, it's like air, very lightweight keyboard. The trackpad, I will be honest and say this is the first trackpad that I've used with my um, iPad Pro. And so I don't know if it's like this for all uh, trackpads or third-party trackpads at least, but it was very, I don't want to say hit and miss because it definitely worked, but you really have to be um, honed in on what, you're, what area you're clicking because it will do a right click and a left click depending on the area. But several times I had to do a click um, a few times just to get to where I was going. Gestures uh, work pretty well. Scrolling works pretty well. So again, at the price point, there's really not a lot to complain about there. Just some little things that I noticed. Um, I want to end this video. I did have a couple of questions on my unboxing video about the case. Um, I believe one of the questions was, does it separate, does the iPad separate from the case when you want it to? And unfortunately it doesn't. So as you can see, it'll kind of angle out like this, but this portion back here is connected to the case. And in order to take the iPad out of that, you'd have to take the whole case off. So it does not. Um, I think the other question was, can you lay it flat? So you could lay it like this, and that's pretty flat. I think one time when I was like watching YouTube in bed, I just kind of folded everything. And so you can certainly lay it like this and just have it like this, hold it like this and use it. Um, there's not a whole lot of weight added to your iPad. There is a little bit of bulk, but once you get used to that, I don't think you really notice it as much. I haven't after a week. Um, other thoughts that I had, I don't think I have any. I think overall it is a great case. Um, again, especially if it, you're in the market for something with a trackpad included with your keyboard, I don't think there's a better deal out there right now than this. If you can get over the, the couple of quirks about it, uh, I think it's worth the value. Um, thank you so much for watching and thank you for submitting questions and supporting my videos. Um, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.